decals can be used to plaster all kinds of bonus textures over objects in your game, such as stickers or graffiti. We could theoretically just use textured quads and place them on flat surfaces to achieve this effect, but if we want the pattern to stick to a curved surface or wrap around a corner, we'd need to build a system where the mesh gets cut off partway, which is annoying. With decals, the texture gets projected onto whatever shape of geometry we want. Although HDRP already has native decal support, URP does not, and that's where shaders come in. I'm basing most of the theory on Nalocat's approach, which is linked in the description, but my shader won't have quite as many features. Before we crack on, I'd like to mention that all my videos are made possible by support on Patreon, Ko-fi, and people subscribing. Now let's make some decals. Decals are intended to be used whenever we want to project a texture over any surface, whether it's flat or uneven. That means it's difficult to use a mesh-based approach, because we'd have to wrap the geometry tightly around the object. Instead, we're going to exploit object space and the depth texture to map the texture inside a cube. Let me explain. We're starting with a texture, which for the purposes of this tutorial, I'll assume is perfectly square. Conceptually, we want to place the texture on one end of a cube and then move it down the cube volume and paint any surface that the texture hits. We'll be able to place this cube inside the scene wherever we want the decal to appear. How do we do that? We can only render the surface of the cube, so unfortunately we can't do anything to directly paint on the section of wall that intersects the cube. But what if we draw the cube after drawing all the solid geometry in the scene? That allows us to indirectly paint on the cube by using the depth texture to figure out which of the cube's pixels overlap an intersection between the cube and a wall, and only draw a texture on those bits. That will require us to take depth values from the depth texture, then reconstruct the wall position from those values. Once we've done that, we'll delete the pixels outside the intersection. For example, this point, reconstructed from the depth texture, is inside the cube, but this point is not. But how do we decide which positions are inside the cube? As I mentioned, object space is going to help a lot here. Object space is where each vertex, or edge, is defined relative to an object's pivot point. For the Unity default cube, its edges are one unit in length, and the pivot is in the centre, so the vertices are at positions 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and minus 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and so on. Therefore, it's very easy to delete pixels outside the Unity default cube by transforming their world position to the cube's object position, and then checking it's between minus 0.5 and 0.5 in all three axes. And what about mapping the texture? That's easy once we've got the object position of the valid pixels. We just remove the Z component of the position, shift by 0.5 in the X and Y axes so that 0, 0 is in the corner, and those are the UV positions. Then we map the texture and output to base colour. Let's see all of that in action. We'll start with an unlit graph by going to Create, Shader, Universal Render Pipeline, Unlit Shader Graph. We also need to find the project's forward renderer pipeline asset and tick the depth texture box to make sure our shader works. The pipeline asset is in the asset slash settings folder by default. This graph will only require one property, the main texture. You could add extra ones for a base colour and for tiling an offset too, but I'll stick with the bare basics. We want this shader to be drawn after all other solid geometry, and we might want to support transparent textures. We can do both of these things by going to the graph settings and changing the surface to transparent. Let's crack on with the graph. The process to reconstruct the world position from the depth buffer is unfortunately a bit complicated, but I'll do my best to walk you through it. We'll start off with the scene depth node in raw mode, which retrieves a value between 0 and 1 based on how far away from the camera each pixel that's already rendered is. Remember that this should contain all opaque objects in the scene. These values represent the Z component of clip space, which represents everything relative to where it will appear on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new vector 3 with a scene depth in the Z component slot. We also need the X and Y components of clip space, which we can get using a screen position node. This needs to be in center mode, then we can use a split node to grab just the X and Y components. Use a negate node to invert the Y component, because these positions are basically upside down for what we're about to do. When Unity is taking objects and turning them into screen pixels, 
a series of transformation matrices get applied to all the vertices of the object. The model transformation goes from object space to world space, then the view transformation gets us to view space, and finally the projection transform gets us to clip space, which is what we've got at the moment. We want to unravel everything back to world space, so we need to use the inverse view projection matrix. Shader Graph provides all of these transformations for us, so use a transformation matrix node and use the drop down to select inverse view projection, then multiply by the clip space vector 3. Order matters here, so make sure that the matrix is in the A slot. The output is a vector 4. The reason why is a little bit out of the scope of this tutorial, but if you're interested in why it's a vector 4 as opposed to a vector 3, look up homogeneous coordinates. All we need to know is that we should divide the XYZ components by the W component to be left with the correct world space XYZ position. We'll do that by splitting the vector 4, creating a new vector 3, and then dividing by the W component. Remember that the RGBA is equivalent to XYZW in this context. That gets us the world space position. Phew, that was a little bit involved, wasn't it? Now we would use a transform node to convert from world space to object space, since the rest of our calculations require object space. From here, we'll deal with clipping pixels that are outside the Unity cube. For that, we will use a step node, which returns 1 if the input value is above the edge threshold, and 0 otherwise. If we input a vector 3, it will do the comparisons per component. Since the Unity default cube spans between 0.5 and minus 0.5 in the x, y, and z directions, we will use two step nodes. One to provide a lower bound at minus 0.5, minus 0.5, minus 1.5, and the second to provide an upper bound at 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. For the second one, we can do a neat trick where we use 0.5 as the threshold, and then use a one minus node to invert the selection. By multiplying these two values together, only pixels within the Unity default cube will have a value of 1, or white. And then to aggregate the results for each of the x, y, and z directions, we can use an all node, which outputs true only if all the input components equal 1, and pass that into a branch node, which should output 1 if the result is true and 0 otherwise. This result basically tells us whether to render the pixel at all. 0 means no, and 1 means yes. Now let's go back to the transform node and think about texturing. As I mentioned before, the UV coordinates are based on these object space positions. All we need to do is add 0.5, which gives us correctly offset UVs. Unity will automatically ignore the Z component here. Note that you might need to set the texture wrapping on your texture to repeat to make this work properly. Now all that's left to do is use a sample texture 2D node with the main texture and output the RGBA color to base color on the output stack, and then we can multiply the alpha with the zeros and ones from the previous steps. This gives us a final alpha value which we can, of course, use for the alpha pin on the output stack. I'd also recommend going back to the graph settings and ticking two-sided to make sure the decal gets stuck in the right places, an alpha clip threshold which I'll set to a very low value like 0.01. This will completely cull pixels that have a value of 0 after checking the positions were inside the Unity cube for a minor performance save. And that's the decal shader finished. To add one to your scene, add a default Unity cube and add the decal material to it. The texture gets projected along the z-axis of the cube, so make sure you orient them correctly. And to avoid overdraw, where the shader gets run on pixels that will get culled anyway, Make the cube as thin as it can be while still covering the surface you want to paint a texture on. If you love decals as much as me, you'll likely end up with a scene that looks like this. Thanks to all my Patreon supporters on screen right now, you all make these videos possible. If you enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe and I'll see you in the next shader video. Until next time, have fun making shaders.